Scientific research is an incredibly important part of our society and can help give us insight into our world and bodies, but also can help us improve our quality of life as we know it. In order to gain these advancements, experiments are often necessary, and sometimes these experiments can be absolutely shocking. From animal experiments to human experiments, both horrifying and interesting, on today's top 10 list, we are going to be talking about the top 10 shocking science experiments you won't believe. Before I dive into this list, you guys, you know I'm going to remind you to head over to Lindsay's new reaction channel called Peach and hit that subscribe button because you don't want to miss out on the very first videos that are quickly approaching. Click the link in the description box to head over there and show her some love. Let's get into this list. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Pit of Despair. This experiment was conducted by Henry Harlow and is one of the most controversial on this list. In a sort of mental health study, Henry decided to induce depression in monkeys. He took very young monkeys and separated them from their peers and mothers and put them into isolation in a cage that was called the pit of despair. Sometimes the monkeys would stay there for longer, more extended periods, and other times they would be repeatedly separated and put into the cage for multiple shorter stays. These monkeys all proved to be extremely psychologically disturbed after the conclusion of this experiment, which should have seemed kind of obvious even before the experiment was even conducted. These monkeys were used as a model of human clinical depression, but here's where things got even sadder than they already were. These monkeys were unable to be treated and rehabilitated. Despite various forms of treatment, they just were unable to get back to the place they would have been had they not been subject to this cruel experiment. Before I dive into this one, guys, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. It really helps us out. In our number nine spot today, we have cell regeneration. This experiment comes to us from 2009 from the University of Pittsburgh's McGowan's Institute of regenerative medicine. This experiment, which proved successful, was aimed to find a way to regenerate human cells, especially in the hopes of one day being able to regrow human limbs. Obviously an interesting topic with an important and exciting goal, but the way they went about this was definitely quite shocking. Basically, scientists took a pig's bladder and scraped out some cells from the inside of the lining. They then took these tissues and decellularized them, which is the process that is used in order to isolate the extracellular matrix. After this, they are dried and then used. By this method, scientists were able to actually regrow a finger, which is pretty unbelievable. There is something kind of insane about a dried pig bladder being able to regrow an organ, but science is pretty wild a lot of the time. In our number eight spot today, we have vampire rats. Whether you believe in vampires or not, this experiment might have proven that they really might be onto something. It is possible that maybe the blood of the young can make you reverse an age and live forever. Well, maybe not literally. Scientists conducted an experiment in which they joined two mice together. One of the mice was young and one of the mice was older. They connected their circulatory systems in order to study the effects and basically just to see if anything would happen. Once the circulatory systems were connected and the older mouse was receiving the blood of the younger mouse, the older one began to experience reversing in the aging of both the muscles and the brain. This is obviously extremely interesting, exciting, and potentially promising, but there is much more research research and time that needs to go into this particular study before it can even begin to think about reaching a human trial phase. In our number seven spot today, we have the Robo Rat. As it turns out, our phones sometimes are not enough to keep full tracking tabs on us, so it looks like people are trying to create even more creepy, sneaky ways to spy on, well, anyone. Researchers have found a way to have remote controlled animals that can help them keep an eye on you. Cybernetic rats and beetles have both already been been created and have proven to be quite effective, which is already quite disgusting and a little strange, but now researchers are wanting to take it even a step further. Next up is flying bugs. Imagine that fly buzzing around your bedroom and keeping you up at night is actually being controlled by someone who's trying to keep an eye on you. This one could definitely be the plot to a horror movie. Maybe it already is. In our number six spot today, we have the undead. If you've seen The Walking Dead or really any zombie anything, you'll wonder why anyone was ever conducting this experiment at all, and if you're a sensitive animal lover, you might want to skip over this number. A team of Russian scientists released a video in which they showed a few dog heads that were being kept alive by an artificial blood circulation system. In the video, the scientists used a heart-lung machine and were able to show the dog's head responding to sound. They would wiggle their ears, blink their eyes, and sometimes were even able to lick their mouths. In 2005, for some reason, American scientists began to try to recreate this horrifying experiment 
experience. They flushed out all of the blood from a dog and replaced it with oxygen and sugar saline. Just three hours after this and after a blood transfusion and an electric shock, the dog was somehow brought back from the dead. I truly wish I knew the purpose of this experiment, but I think I mostly wish it just never occurred at all. In our number five spot today, we have Britches. Britches is a perfect example of a horrifying experiment done on an animal for human gain. Basically, researchers wanted to test out brain implanted sonar devices in an attempt to create something that would be an asset to people without sight. There have been people without sight in the past, and I'm sure also in the present, who have been able to develop a sort of echolocation type skill, where by clicking their tongue or making other sounds, they're able to map out their surroundings. Such a cool thing, and having a scientific advancement or the technology to help with this process should be an amazing thing, and it definitely is, until the experiment takes a very dark turn. This is where Britches comes in. Britches was a monkey who did have his sight, but in order to test the efficacy of this device, they needed a monkey without sight. Instead of finding a monkey without sight, they just took Britches away, and they did this by sewing his perfectly healthy eyes shut. This experiment was undoubtedly helpful in the scientific process, but it should never be at this kind of a cost. It is pretty clear that Britches most definitely did not deserve that kind of treatment at all. In our number four spot today, we have the Hoffling Hospital Experiment. This experiment happened all the way back in 1966 in a time where the rules of psychological experiments were a lot more loosey-goosey. Because of this, the nurses that were all a part of this experiment had no idea that they were participants, which nowadays would be illegal. Basically, this experiment took place on the night shift. The night nurse would receive a phone call during the shift, and on the other end would be Dr. Smith, who's actually the researcher. He would ask the nurses to check the medicine cabinet to see if they had a drug called astrotin. This was actually a drug that was made up for this experiment, and it was just a placebo. The astrotin would clearly state that the maximum dosage was 10 milligrams, but Dr. Smith would ask the nurses to administer 20 milligrams. They were told that the doctor was in a hurry and he would sign the authorization papers as soon as he came to see the patient later on that night. If the nurse decided to give the patient the drug, they would be breaking three rules. They're not allowed to accept instructions over the phone, the dose was double the maximum limit stated on the box, and the medicine itself was unauthorized and it wasn't on the ward stock list, so it shouldn't be in use at the hospital. Out of the 22 unknowing nurse participants, 21 of them went to administer this drug. That's insane. This wasn't to say that nurses were bad people or bad at their job, but this experiment combined with the interviews that happened afterwards showed how the power imbalance and the social pressure that comes along with that can affect the outcome of a workplace extremely drastically, and in this case, it really could have been a matter of life and death. In our number three spot today, we have THN1412. In 2007, there began the trial of a newer drug called THN1412 that was intended to be used to treat leukemia. It is normal for a drug to have gone through an animal testing phase prior to being tested on humans, and this one was no different. This drug had been only tested in animals prior to this, but the animal trials were very successful, so it was dubbed safe to begin testing in human trials. To start off with, the humans were given a dose that was 500 times lower than the dose that was given to the animals just to play things as safe as possible. Unfortunately, however, these precautions did not seem to be enough as this drug that had undergone all the necessary pretrial steps ended up being catastrophic once humans became involved. This drug began to cause organ failure in those who had even a tiny dose of it. I'm not sure if there would have been a way to know this prior to this terrible event or if this is just one of those terrible caveats to the trial testing process. In our number two spot today, we have the Tuskegee Syphilis Experiment. In the years between 1932 and 1972, there were 399 black impoverished farmers in Alabama who all had syphilis who were recruited to participate in a free program. They were told that the program would help them treat their ailment, but of course, that never happened. The experiment was conducted by people who were trying to see what would happen if the disease went untreated. Instead of treating the men with penicillin, which was the recommended treatment at the time, the men received aspirin and mineral supplements as placebos. And while this experiment was conducted to try and understand what effect the spread of disease has on the body, the unethical considerations of the scientists who conducted it proved to be absolutely fatal and just downright cruel. Out of the 399, 28 of them passed away from the disease directly, 100 of them passed away from complications related to the disease, 40 spouses became infected, which then led to 19 children being passed the disease at birth. This whole situation truly is 
one of those times where you stop and wonder how these things were ever treated as acceptable and really hope that things have changed for good. In our number one spot today, we have Unit 731. The Imperial Japanese Army's Unit 713 conducted some pretty horrifying experiments during World War II that certainly are shocking to anyone who learns about them. The experiments were meant to be done as a way to prepare for biological warfare, but the process was gruesome and extremely inhumane. Different medical schools and universities provided doctors and other research staff to help conduct these experiments, and they used both prisoners and civilians as the guinea pigs for them. There were a bunch of different experiments that were conducted during this time, some of which involved injecting them with pathogens such as plague or cholera or anthrax. Others involved vivisection or operations with no anesthesia, putting them in a pressure chamber to see how much a human can withstand before bursting, or live weapons testing. It is hard to believe that this was a real thing that happened and we honestly can't even begin to imagine what those people were forced to face during that time. Uh <laughs> That's the end, and it was just sad, and I don't know how to be like, anyway, that was so upsetting, but that's the end of the video and we're done. Um, okay, so that's been our list for today, guys. Thank you so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlovsky, and I'll see you next time. Bye. We are going to be talking about the top 10 shocking psychs. Blah, blah, blah from the University of Pittsburgh McGowan's from the University of Pittsburgh's McGowan Institute of Regenerate the the McGowan Institute of Regener Regenerative of Regenerate <laughs> This is going in the bloopers for sure because I can't say this word it is possible that maybe the blood of the young can make you reverse in age why is the skipping in our number two spot today, we have the, oh, I don't know how to say this, Tuskegee. I'm gonna look it up. Sorry to whoever's edit editing this. You're used to this. Tuskegee. Tuskegee? One sec, one sec. Don't even worry. <laughs>